Let us pray. O good and loving shepherd, lead us now in the power of your spirit as we hear again your word for our soul's health. Amen. Words from the Gospel read, John's Gospel, the 10th chapter and the 24th verse. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. I want to speak to you one on the subject. Who is this Jesus? Is that your question? Faith is the only answer. Who is this Jesus? As I said to the children on this whole Sunday, commonly known as Good Shepherd Sunday, the evangelist John helps us to set the scene in which Jesus found himself. John tells us that it was the festival of dedication in Jerusalem and it was winter. He was very particular about giving us a seasonal time. It was winter. The festival of dedication is also known as the festival of lights or as we call it today by its Hebrew name Hanukkah. Up to this point, Jesus had taught many things and performed many miracles or signs, as is the description in John's Gospel. Yet, the people were divided over who Jesus is. Is that your question? John chapter 7, verses 40 through 44 speaks of this division among the people with respect to Jesus' identity. In chapter 10, verses 19 through 21, we read again, the Jews were divided because of his words. Many of them were saying, he has a demon and is out of his mind. Why listen to him? Others were saying, these are not the words of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? And so you see the tension. I find it interesting that the evangelist tells us that this evil took place or occurred in winter. There are only two references to weather in all of Scripture. In the Song of Solomon, we hear of springtime. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 12. I give you that to read for yourself when we get home. The only New Testament reference to weather is found in our gospel lesson. It was the feast of the dedication at Jerusalem, and John is particular to tell us it was winter. And Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. John 10, 22. <clears throat> now John was not a meteorologist. So I believe when he talks about being winter in the text, he is referring to the spiritual climate expressed by those who were opposed to Jesus and his message. You know, sometimes you were people and you say, they're cool. And you know what that means. You know, they're not warm and fuzzy. They're cold. Uh, this is probably what Jesus, or uh, John is talking about 
in the context of Jesus this morning. You see, the wind chill factor of hostility and endless criticism from the religious leaders in Jerusalem cut Jesus and his disciples to the bone. Blasting them with the cold air of ridicule and resentment. It is into this spiritual arctic atmosphere Jesus spoke these beautiful words that compared his followers' love and trust for him to that wonderful relationship between sheep and the shepherd. He says, my sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. You can come on that. Jesus says to the people in this area. My people know me and I know them. They believe in me and I believe in them. If you would remember on Easter Sunday, some people can't even remember when they had the breakfast this morning, but I'm trying to stretch your memory back to Easter Sunday. I made the following statement in my sermon. Jesus' resurrection is not an event to be proven. It is a mystery to be proclaimed. I'm going somewhere with this. That is why I have never been convinced that Easter Sunday is a time for arguments. There is no argument or arrangement of compelling bits of evidence that will convince anyone to believe in the resurrection. So we do not argue on Easter, we proclaim, we celebrate, we revel in the mystical truth that gives a context and purpose to our lives. It is only this resurrection truth that we live as Christians. Just as I would insist that you cannot convince anyone to believe the resurrection through code arguments, so Jesus in the text today would not try to win over those cultured despisers by the power of his persuasion. Instead, he simply pointed to his disciples and those people who believe in him. Do you believe this morning? Again and again, Jesus insisted that faith is not an acquisition that comes through argument or experiment. Faith comes through loving, trusting relationships that are personal and vital. That's the relationship that we as Christians must cultivate with Jesus. This is the relationship that Tabitha, or Dawes, had with Jesus. And so Peter was able to raise her from the dead, a sign of the power and presence of the resurrected Jesus. In other words, Jesus' power is felt through us and dispensed to us who believe. No mention, I must say, is made as to whether Tabitha was a mother, whether she had children or not in the text. But one can imagine if she was, how happy her children would have been to turn their mourning into joy. Some of you today who have lost your mothers 
on this particular mother that it would do anything to have her back, would you? I know I know. Those were joyful days for me. I cooked for my mom. And she sat and enjoyed every inch of my cooking, even if it was burnt. But she loved it anyhow. We spent some awesome time together. So on this Mother's Day, I would imagine if we could bring our mothers back, what joy that would be as Tabitha, who may have been a mother, but nothing was said about her, came back to life through the power of those who believe in Jesus risen from the dead. But Jesus makes it clear this morning that his sheep are not stupid beasts, but beloved sons and daughters who have been redeemed from pain, gathered from confusion, and brought out of darkness into light. This is the witness of Tabitha. Again and again, Jesus expresses his love and commitment to his followers. I am the good shepherd. I give those who follow me the gift of eternal life and they will never perish. Jesus wants us to know of his great love and concern for us that he will provide what we need that when danger lurks he will protect us. No wonder the psalmist could say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. What Jesus tried to say to the Jewish leaders who were demanding answers is precisely what I believe he would tell us today. Faith is not the result of an intellectual pursuit or a case of getting questions answered. Faith is the ability to hear the shepherd's voice and find connection, peace, and confidence from an intimate association with him. We have to connect with Jesus. But listen to what Jesus said to those who were harassing him with the demand for answers. I have told you, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep Hear my voice. I know them and they follow. Are you followers of Jesus today? I think this means that not only is the image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd a source of emotional joy and visual pleasure, but it just may give us a valuable insight into what it means to be a Christian. We are the sheep who know the shepherd's voice, and from that knowledge, we gain confidence, purpose, and hope. This means that faith is more than intellectual asset. Faith is trust. Faith is a willingness to follow and not always be in charge. Faith is the ability to remain calm in those moments when maybe you cannot hear the shepherd's voice as clearly as you might. Faith 
is enjoying his presence with abandon. Forget what's in there. I am in the presence of Jesus. The hymn writer says, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. This image of the good shepherd also reminds us that we cannot follow by ourselves. We have the assurance of a love that will pursue us if we go astray. But the intention is for us to be connected, believe, a part of the flock, if you will. So we are urged today to remain in fellowship because it is here with others that we have the best chance to know the joy of him who loves us. We hear good news today. We have a loving shepherd, God, who knows us and loves us. We hear his voice, and by his grace, we follow him. He promises us that nothing will ever separate us from him, neither in this life or in the life to come. No one shall snatch us from his hands. What does this mean? Simply this. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And God's people say, Amen. To God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, prescribe the living power of God.